Hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to have a look again at the Tortoise. This is a tank that I want to like again, but I really can't due to my battle experience in it. And now the tank is relatively slow, compar comparable to the mouse. The horsepower to ton ratio is not good. Um, the armor is discussable. I think it doesn't really um, hold up to the meta anymore. Although you have to profit from the fact that you don't face the Americans uh, with their insane light tank spam and uh, heat FS and whatnot. But, you know, that's your only advantage next to also the or one of the few advantages the, that you have next to your cast support and the air superiority that the Spitfires and the American planes in the air um, provide. Because I think I never saw the Americans fight the British. So your opponents are the Germans and also the Russians in the majority of cases. But let's have a quick look in the tech tree to see what the tortoise problem actually is. It's surrounded by very, very competitive 6.7 tanks. We have the FV4202, the Carnarvon, the Centurion Mark III and the, and the STRV81 with rapid firing 20 pounders with APDS or AP good armor and turrets that actually can turn and if that's not enough well you even have the FE4200 the FE4005 with the biggest gun or how it's in the game that just uh, under normal circumstances should delete everything it's discussable with the heat uh, with the hash nerf but the tortoise is again something where nothing really gets in your favor and you have to rely on the enemy's mismanagement, the enemy's mistake and your team not rushing ahead and killing everything or they get killed. So um, that you find a battle where the circumstances are actually good for you to bring your gun to work are rather rare. Now and then let's continue with talking about the gun. It's a very unique gun uh, in terms of caliber, a 94mm 32 pounder OQF with 60 rounds. That's a lot of ammunition. You have a lot of smoke launchers, but it's just one or two smoke launchers. I guess it's just one. Um, and also, yeah, a double machine gun turret. And, you know, we have some really insane weak spots here with flat armor, which every normal tank in the game can penetrate in your battle rating bracket even, and also the, um, you know, machine gun port. Your firing arcs of the cannon are surprisingly good for a casemate tank destroyer. And um, that brings us to the ammunition. We just have the shell mark one, uh, an important high explosive shell. And then we have the shot mark one, which is an AP CBC round with 1043 meters of mass velocity. It's a complete solid shot, but the designation is the same as on, for example, the German APHE rounds. So I just call them APHE rounds because they have a high explosive core. And um, I think this shell profits massively from the AP buff that the uh, French tanks brought with them when they were introduced. Um, but you know it's two-staged ammunition so the reload is not the fastest in the game with 9.1 seconds but still it's not all that bad it's just normal and if we have a look at the Americans with the T-34 well you know that also has 247 millimeters of penetration with 944 meters per second muscle velocity so 100 meters per second less and you know, the post pen effect of this shell is much, much greater. Also, I have also a backup of one of the strongest APCR rounds in the game at the moment. And I have a turret, I have decent, decentlish mobility and <laughs> some uh, 50 cals to back it up and really great working armor, especially hull down with better survivability in my books and even the t29's armor piercing shot is here an ap apbc round with well a few more millimeters of penetration but again slower muscle velocity the penetration is further very comparable with the 10.5 centimeter target 2's upgraded panzergranate 39 
um, with 247 millimeters of penetration. That also can, in theory, um, you know, be supported by the APCR, the Panzergranate 40. So that makes the tortoise also not very, uh, not looking very good against the SU-100P, which is also a casemate tank destroyer, but is much faster and also offers an APCVC round with 240 millimeters of penetration. But much like uh, the T-29 and the Tiger 2105 and also the SU-100P, those shells have a high explosive core, so in many situations they just have a better post-penetration damage effect and are certainly much better at killing crew, which is the most reliable way to take out an enemy right away with one shot. So the Tortoise is a little bit of a stinker. Um, I think it deserves a little bit of a battle rating reduction to, you know, go still um, competitively into War Thunder and um, let's have a look at some gameplay shall we so I have four scenes and the first one is um, on Berlin where we have three capture zones I decide myself to let the scene run from the very beginning to the very end so that you can see how the normal day of a tortoise driver looks like and you know the spade doesn't actually look that bad in comparison to the other three tanks here in front of me but it's a bit deceiving because the second you have to turn, the second you need to climb a hill um, or cover a longer distance, you really feel it that the tank is slow. Also, the maneuverability is awful and that means you always get kicked into the lower skill and then you are down to neutral steering, which is awfully slow in this tank. So here you can see the very good firing arc and I'm of the gun if you look at the paper model in the bottom left corner but I decide myself to go to the Reichstag uh, and capture A and then see how it's going. I have no intention of really pushing in this tank to hold the position to um, you know give some tanks um, the chance to support you by you know getting disabled and then the enemy closing in and trying to get to your side where then they get taken out by the tanks behind you is what the tortoise can do a little bit like the mouse a little bit like the yak tiger but i don't really see this tank performing very well at 6.7 especially in comparison to all the other British 6.7 tanks. That was just a split second too late, um, but I still have to roll into the cap to deny the T44-100 the capturing of this um, point. I received the first shot. I have no idea where it came from. I look around. Then I receive a <laughs> hit in the cupola. A third shot. It's an object nano 6 and I have a clear line of sight and I knock out his crew. So I already lost three of my seven crew members and there is another Soviet tank coming in and I reload and I wait for the golden opportunity to get a good shot. He angles up the tank and I have a good shot through the turret roof which is rather rare. Take out the gun breach the loader and the commander so he does not have a very good day if that would have been an APHE shell there is the possibility that I would have killed him again the shot was a bit too light that was my fault it seems like the T44-100 got either killed or went out of the capture zone so I was free to capture it immediately I replenish one of my crew members making it five again and there are many many tanks in the game that do not even have five crew members. I have four crew members left after I got penetrated by an APHE round from an object nano 6. It has not the highest high explosive mass in the APHE round but you get the point. Y you kind of feel like you're having some sort of hit points like in World of Tanks but then your gun lets you down a little bit. It's not an awful tank, it's not a Churchill Mark III but it's missing something and I constantly get this that this tank is not good enough and oh boy what is that that's an R. <laughs> that's a dead IS-6 that was a pure reaction shot um, aiming from third person in the tortoise is actually not that bad 
and I had a good shot between the tracks and the angled side armor and was lucky enough to hit the ammunition. Now I use the rack of the IS-6 to shield a good portion of my side, although I am a very tall and big tank because I saw a machine gun there and uh, some action going on. So there is a Russian tank, I wait patiently up until he drives up and again we hit the ammunition and the loader of the T44-100. Now I want to charge him down with a tortoise and that causes a bit of a problem. If that would have been an APHE shell, there is a good portion that I would have killed him. And this is a big problem for the uh, British, that even if you hit ammunition, that it doesn't blow up. But Kroonar got due to APHE, like from this Object Nano 6, that's near our spawn in a god mode position, um, you know, is very, very reliable. So that's kind of the deal. Again, I don't see how this tank is fair at 6.7. Although, you know, facing lower tier tanks, I don't think due to the problems with the mobility that this tank will be uh, overpowered. But certainly this Panther driver is um, out of crew members that could complain. So first kill. And now I'm pushing hardcore. I'm always looking for the short direct distance to get my uh, shells into the enemy. A Tiger 2 and again a reaction shot third person and we hit the ammunition and then this German tank it blows up. Good stuff right there. So let's move up, let's move up, let's move up. I have here an ally with me. Funnily enough I have two exhaust pipes, one in the rear and one on the left hand side and what we have here is a panther which is completely distracted so I try to turn around again the neutral steering kicks in which is not good and does this have does this panther have a very sad rotation speed well now he's dead and this Ferdinand has the god shot because look at where he penetrates me he penetrates me through the lower glazes through the transmission and one propellant charge says goodbye and I'm dead. I began to record this too late. You can see it's still in the kill message. I kill a Ferdinand and um, now I am here busy with this T-44 which tries to blind me. I disabled his gun breach so this is good and um, well then let's finish him. Good stuff right there. And then the other one, um, which I disabled as well, is now panicking and he's backing up. Awkward angle, I penetrate the side and I have a complete crew knockout. I tried not to instantly um, go into the cap or the spawn zone and spawn camp them, but I had to go into this direction because I actually wanted to go behind there and take the long route. But there is this French tank unloading into me and my gun breach is dead, my engine is dead, my gun breach, uh, my um, turret rotation is down, now my gunner is dead, and finally I'm finished off by the Rhine 40T. But it took him quite a little bit of ammunition. So maybe he could have killed me easier if he would have just uh, shot straight through the engine um, with, you know, getting a bit closer to me. And this is now the last battle on Abandoned Factory and I think it's a good example of what are the good sides and the bad sides about the Tortoise. So in the gameplay you might notice that I didn't use any sort of bush. So you might consider doing it, but everybody seems to know how the tortoise works and where the weak spots are. So the bushes do not really help that much. That's a Tiger 2 and that shot was really bad. That was just a bad shot. So now I have to blind the enemy with the two machine guns. I wiggle a little bit with the armor successfully because he bounces and does not disable my gun breach, which is one of the most frustrating things in a tortoise together with the object 268 and some other tank destroyers so i disabled his gun breach take out his transmission which is conveniently mounted in the front and i now have all the time in the world to take out his gunner without him shooting back so he's down to three crew members i now try to take out 
the driver and then to finish off him off with the gunner but the shell bounces off and I well now aim for the gunner and I get the kill it seems like I also killed the loader but I'm not quite sure so now I want to go into the cab but as usual I look around and there was some exhaust fumes and it's an object nano 6 and it took, takes me a long time to turn around but I one shot him through the back and he loitered uh, around for too long so that is already a double strike now there um, now I see that there is an M60 and he gets hammered from the rear by some sort of SPA quite a lot and watch again what happens to the enemy tank because I can fire some sort of a bit like on the move and I hit the Coelian kill three of the five crew members in the turret also hit the ammunition the first time and also here the second time both time it gets fully hit gets black and just vanishes so this is the real drawback of the British and I think Gaijin should really change this now finally I disabled the cannon breach but sadly didn't hit the gunner um, and now I try to somewhat stay in the cap and at least get the cap now I get the kill assist T92 finished off the Quillian and there is where I actually make the mistake okay um, instead of holding the position I push on this is just gamer instinct I guess the big mistake that always gets me killed in such a situation where I have the situation under control now the big issue is that all around the map there could be distributed some tanks that just were too afraid to join the fight right away that are just in an ambush position and yes I'm moving here into the open um, leaving all sorts of cover and all sorts of um, support behind I try somewhat to help this guy here which is busy fighting a tiger too so let's see if we can help him the tiger 2 turns the turret didn't see me coming and we knock him out because he didn't have too much crew left alive in the tank now I get shot from somewhere on the side I don't know where exactly it came from and then you can see the reverse gear it also goes up to 19 kilometers an hour which is surprisingly fast and it's comparable to the mouse so there is a tank moving up and I shoot it which is was already burning and I killed I guess the last crew member in the Kruppsteier Waffenträger and this is again then the bad mistake of trying to hunt down an enemy or a Russian machine gun truck. And he gets taken out by Ferdinand. Now I get shot into the side by a Tiger 2. I try to get into the cover of this house before he can do anything about it. And this is now where... I just didn't hit the right pixels on this guy I don't have a heavy machine gun to really take him out and I have to worry about this Ferdinand so first shot in and I don't know if this penetrated before the hit cam could um, come off cooldown so to say and one shot through the middle and it vanishes in the optic so I guess that's a Russian player right now my gun breach gets taken out and I try to repair 35 seconds of repair time because we're down to six crew members. I think when you have such a tank that requires um, survivability or you know relies on its armor, it should have better repair time. And now the Russian tank is behind me. He actually tracks me and now I have a 40 second reload rate. And, you know, my gun breach doesn't get repaired. The Ferdinand is charging me. And there is nothing that I could do about it. He fires on the move, bounces. And now my gun barrel is blown up. But it was the best chance. And it gets repaired again. That's nice. But, you know, all good things come to an end. And the Ferdinand takes me out with ease by flanking me. So that's the Tortoise. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think the Tortoise needs a bit of love, either with new ammunition types or in the best thing would be to downgrade it to 6.3 battle rating wise. Finally, that's it with me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields of War Thunder.